Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to episode 28 of my Logic Pro 10 video tutorial series. In this episode, we'll continue working with the Piano Roll Editor for MIDI editing, and we'll also take a look at the snap modes, uh, understanding the grid, uh, working with uh, multiple regions of information simultaneously, and we'll also take a look at uh, scale quantize and quantization strength. So what I've got here is just a basic musical example. Uh, I have what I'm calling action drums and bass down here, rendered to audio, uh, just a basic MIDI drum kit, as well as just a basic kind of sawtooth uh, melody up here. So let's take a listen to what this sounds like. All right, so it pretty much just repeats from there on. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just solo out my uh, sawtooth uh, synth up here, click on it and hit Command-4 to open it up in the Piano Roll Editor. And let's just take a listen to this one more time just to see what this sounds like by itself. Now, this melody is in the key of C minor, and what I want to do with it is I want to create a harmony to go along with it, just to kind of make it a little bit more interesting. Um, I could either duplicate the MIDI data right here in the Piano Roll Editor by using the Option key, uh, but what I'm actually going to do is, because this synthesizer is a monophonic synth, meaning that it can only play one note at a time, I'm actually going to duplicate this track and make one track the harmony track and one be the main C minor melody track like I have here. So I'm just going to click on the track and then click on this icon right here to duplicate the track. There we go. And I'm just going to hold Option and drag this MIDI region straight down to duplicate it. I'm going to name the upper one. Uh, I'll just call it, um, and I'll just call it Sawtooth Lead C Minor, and then I'll call this one Sawtooth Lead. Uh, I'll call it Harmony. There we go. Okay, now let's just take a look at the Harmony track. Now it's basically just a copy of what we had before, uh, but what we can do is we can use this Scale Quantize option over here to uh, very easily create a harmony with this. Now, typically harmonies in music, if you're not familiar with music theory, happen on thirds, fourths, uh, fifths, and sixths. Sixths. Uh, not always, uh, there are other harmonies on the tritone or the seventh or the dominant seventh, whatever um, uh, interval you're using, but uh, thirds and fourths, fifths, and sixths tend to be the most harmonious, the most common. Um, so what I'm going to do is, since this melody starts on C here, I'm going to bump it up a third to E flat. Uh, that's a minor third, by the way. So I'm going to just hit Command A, and then hold Option and bump this up three steps. One, two, three. There we go. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to go ahead and just move this whole thing down an octave to the E flat one octave below. So again, hit Command A hold shift option and press down, and there we go. So we're essentially a minor third up and then an octave down, which ends up being a major sixth below. So now, since this whole thing is a sixth below the original melody, we've basically created parallel harmony here. Um, usually that doesn't sound good, uh, and I'll show you what I mean. I'll just so I'll solo out both of these. And by the way, if you wanna look at both of these simultaneously, all you have to do is drag over both regions hit Command-4, and you'll see both, uh, both tracks here. Okay, so that's not that great sounding. The reason why it doesn't sound good is because the harmony track here um, does not fit within the key of C minor. So even though we've transposed this down a sixth to be in harmony with the C minor um, main melody, uh, it's all in parallel. So we have to basically tell this melody, hey, you need to quantize to the key of C minor, even though you start on an E flat. So what you can do is just hit Command A, go over to your scale quantize here, and then um, I'm going to choose minor, or natural minor, that is. 
and then I'll choose C minor, which it automatically just chose that because it's the top one. As you can see, some of the notes were kind of um, bumped up to fit in the key of C minor, which is basically uh, C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C. So any notes that were out of that range were bumped up to fit in the range. So let's listen to what this sounds like by itself. Oop, that's both of them. Let's turn off the, the top one there. All right, that sounds pretty good. Let's listen to both of these at the same time. Yeah, that's way better. And the, again, the reason why it sounds good is that uh, all of these notes, melody and harmony, all fit within the key of C minor. They don't have any notes that are outside of C minor. Now, uh, when you're viewing multiple regions of data like this, it can kind of get confusing as to what um, uh, what region you're looking at. Um, so one thing you can do is you can colorize your regions separately and then make the um, make the notes in the piano roll editor adapt to the color of the region rather than to velocity as we, uh, sh as I showed in the previous video. So what you can do is just show your toolbar by clicking right here. This will show this whole toolbar right here. And you can go over to the right side here and click on colors. This will open up the color palette. And let's turn the harmony, I don't know, orange. It's kind of a red orange there. And then we'll open this up in the piano roll editor. Actually, we'll open up both of these in the piano roll editor. And instead of viewing the notes, the note colors as uh, velocity colors, we're going to go up to view, set note color, and we're going to choose by region color. And so now uh, the green region will be shown in green and the red region will be shown in red. So you can kind of distinguish between um, which note is in what region. So that's kind of nifty. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and keep that the way it is. I'm going to pull the volume of the harmony down just a little bit. And let's see what that sounds like with everything in there. All right, that sounds good. Uh, next, let's go to our drum kit here. I'm just going to open this up in the piano roll editor as well. Just a very basic um, kind of 4-4 drum pattern, uh, nothing special. Next, let's talk about how to edit MIDI data in the Piano Roll Editor using the snap modes. Now, in a previous couple of videos, we talked about how you can edit audio out in the arrange window, and the arrange window had these snap modes, which essentially determine how the edit tools snap to, or maybe don't snap to the grid. Just like the arrange area, the Piano Roll window has its own set of snap modes. They're all basically the same as the arrange area, and they determine how the edit tools move data or edit MIDI data to the grid or maybe not to the grid. So um, if we use the bar mode, you'll see that when I grab a note and drag it to the right, it jumps forward by one bar at a time. A bar is just a musical measure, two, three, four, and so on. Um, you can also use the beat mode, which snaps the note and moves the note uh, by one beat at a time, basically a quarter note. And then you also have division mode, which makes the note snap to each of the individual divisions of the grid. Now, by default, um, the grid is set to a 16th note division. Um, and in a 
basically in 4-4 four, four time, you have four quarter notes per measure, and then you have four divisions of each quarter note, each one being a 16th note. Uh, but the thing about division mode and the thing about the division of the grid is that the division of the grid is not uh, set in stone. You can change what the division of the, of the grid is. And again, just the division of the grid are these kind of uh, vertical gray lines here. And you can snap these notes to the grid. And so whatever you change the grid to be, division mode will snap to that. So the way you can change the division of the grid is to go up to the LCD up here in the transport and show the custom view. And what this will do is it lets you change the division of the grid right here. Um, slash 16 means that the division of our grid is 16th notes. Now if you click on that, you'll see a number of options here. You have a quarter note, uh, 6 is a quarter note triplet, 8 is an eighth note, 12 is an eighth note triplet, 16th is a 16th note, uh, 24 is a 16th note triplet, 32nd note and onward. Um, most of the time you'll just use quarter note through 32nd note. There'll be very few situations where you'll actually use these uh, faster values. So let's say that I'm, uh, I want to change my value, my grid value to an eighth note instead of a 16th note. Well, we just select that. And now when I go back to my uh, drum kit here and open it up in the piano roll, you'll see that the uh, grid value has changed. Now we basically have uh, two ticks on the ruler up here instead of four ticks on the ruler uh, per beat. So we have an eighth note grid. So now that my eighth, uh, my grid is uh, set to an eighth note, the division mode will snap to an eighth note rather than a sixteenth note. So that's how division mode works. You also have smart mode, which basically snaps to bars, beats, and divisions. But it also will let you kind of go in between the beats, but you'll you'll definitely feel it snap to the divisions. So it's a way to kind of work in a, a grid mode, but still maybe offset notes slightly off the grid if you want to. Um, and then the last two modes are ticks and frames. Ticks and frames do not snap to the grid. So ticks and frames allow you to uh, create very kind of subtle um, and kind of fine um, adjustments, but n basically ignoring the grid. Um, ticks should be used for uh, basically anything that's musical, and frames should be used for anytime you're trying to synchronize MIDI data with film uh, or video. Um, now with ticks, uh, the thing to remember is that there are a certain number of ticks per beat in MIDI. Um, at currently in the MIDI protocol, we have um, 960 ticks per beat. So that basically means from the start of measure two to the second beat of measure two, there are 960 tiny little subdivisions of the beat. So that's what ticks uh, snaps to. So I'm gonna go back to uh, beat here and let's try to snap this right back to the grid. Uh-oh, it moved by the grid, but it didn't actually snap to the grid. That is because we are in uh, snap regions to relative value. Now it really should say snap notes to re uh, relative value. I don't know why it says regions, uh, but we can say snap regions to absolute value. And what that does is snaps notes directly to the grid rather than moving by the grid. So that's the difference between a relative and an absolute grid. Now this other stuff at the bottom here, uh, we'll talk about that later. So don't worry about that for now. All right, so that's just an overview of how to use the snap modes with uh, MIDI editing in the piano roll editor. Just keep in mind that all of your MIDI edit tools, including pointer, pencil, uh, and scissors tool, will all snap to the grid based on the snap modes. And if you need a more comprehensive review of the snap modes, go check out episode 12 in this series. All right, the last thing I wanna show you in this video is quantization strength. In the last video, I showed you guys that you can uh, select your MIDI data by hitting Command A to select all, and you could choose a qu uh, time quantize option to uh, quantize MIDI notes to the grid. It basically uh, uh, corrects the rhythm inconsistencies in your playing. Um, so what I've got here is just a little piano idea that I put on top of our uh, previous example, and it sounds like this. But you can hear that it, while it's a little behind and even ahead in some spots. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and quantize this to an eighth note grid. And all the notes are perfectly in place. Now, what quantization strength does is it lets us kind of 
intentionally undo the quantization that we've uh, that we've applied. And basically, what that means is notes will slowly drift away from their intended targets. Um, so if I select all of these notes um, and I go to this strength option over here, you'll see strength and a slider 100%. That means notes are 100% on their intended targets. So as I slide this down, you'll see that the notes just intentionally drift away from their target, but they're not fully off the grid. You know, they're still more quantized than they were before at zero. So again, this lets us create a more human character to it and get rid of any kind of more robotic, more programmed uh, sound that we might have here, which is pretty typical of MIDI data, especially if you quantize to 100%. So that's what quantization strength does. So let's take a listen to this and see what it sounds like. And there we go. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video. In the next episode, we'll take a look at the uh, MIDI draw, and we'll also talk about continuous controllers and how to write MIDI automation. So again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.